In the first example, uh, we have a, a rod uh, subjected to an eccentric, eccentric uh, loading, P. Okay, to determine the maximum load P that can be applied so that the normal stress in this rod doesn't exceed 12 ksi. The rod has a diameter of 2 inch. Okay, so here, this is a design problem. Uh, it's not a straightforward step-by-step -step calculation. It's a design problem, like to def to determine the maximum load P. Okay, we can do it step-by-step um, -step as a normal problem, uh, as an analysis problem, just carrying P as a unknown. So in the end, we determine the stress and compare it to the uh, 12 ksi. Then we can determine the maximum load. Okay, so this is the overall strategy. So let's summarize that. So okay, we're determining the P max. Okay, this will be determined uh, from, this is limited, limited by the maximum or allowable uh, stress, that is 12 ksi. Okay, this stress Stress induced by this P equals the combination of F over A plus or minus F C over I. Okay, just uh, compare this. This has to be no larger than 12 ksi. But in this case, uh, we have not known the F. We have not known the M. So we need to determine these two parameters so that we can calculate the stress. Okay, so first of all, um, we need to determine the F and M. Right? So how to determine the F and M? In our theory part, we have known that so directly you can just, uh, d this kind of situation, uh, on the edge of uh, this rod, you add a P. So it's equivalent to the case that you move the P back to the centroid and add a PE, right? And here is uh, the, the equivalent loading will be a P here plus a bending moment M equals PE, right? But we can also uh, do a, F, uh, a free body diagram to calculate the F and M. Okay, just look at here from this free body diagram. Okay, what is F? This uh, sum Fy equals zero. Right, so you would get um, P minus F equals zero. Right, so F equals P. Right, and then sum of M equals zero what you will get? You will get this M, this M minus P times E equals zero. And what is E? E is half of the diameter. That is one inch. Okay, so obviously the M equals P times one. Okay, so we have determined the F and M uh, as a function of P. Okay, they're not numbers since we have not determined P. Right? We, just, we just carry this P as an unknown. So in the second step, you can determine the section properties. What do we need? Look at the equation. We need A and I, right? The A is just a, a circle, right? Pi d squared over 4. So D is 2, right? So this just equals pi, right? It's a 3.14 square inch. And the I would be pi d to the fourth over 64. Right? So this would be d equals 2. This would be 0 0.7. Eight five is a quarter of pi. Right. 
Then we can calculate these two components of the stress. Right, the first component is just due to the normal loading F, the axial loading F. It right, just equals F over A. That is P over 3.14. And the second stress due to bending is just uh, MC over I. Right, and so we are calculating the maximum stress. Okay, we don't need to consider any uh, random point between the centroid and the edge. Okay, we only consider the maximum possibilities on the edge of the cross section. Okay, so here we will get positive or negative P times one. This is the M. Right times c, c is one again, right? The times another one. So over uh, 0 0.785. Okay, so this will be just a positive or negative p over 0 0.785. Okay, now we can examine the distributions of uh, uh, these two, these two um, stresses, normal stresses. Okay, in the first case, this uh, sigma one is a constant through the cross section, right? So if we examine the cross section, the distribution of sigma one will be a constant. In tension, right? Then how about uh, sigma two? Sigma two. Okay, look at the direction of the M. Look at the direction of the M. Okay, the M M. Okay, so on the left end it will be in tension. Right? On the right end it will be in compression. Right. So the distribution. The, the, the neutral axis will be in the middle. Right? So on the left end, it will be, it will be in tension. And on the right end, it will be in compression. OK, so this is the distribution of uh, sigma 2. So where you will have the maximum stress? Okay, according to superposition, on the left edge you will have positive plus positive. That will be uh, enlarged the positive stress, tensile stress. Right. On the right end you will have the uh, uh, sigma one minus the sigma two. Right? And it will be one positive, one negative, so the magnitude value will be smaller. Okay, so the maximum stress will be on the left corner, right? On the left edge, okay, so the last step, the maximum stress will be P over 3.14 plus P over 0 0.785. This will be 1.592 p, not higher than uh, one uh, 12 ksi, so 12,000 psi. Or the p will be no larger than 75 40 pounds. Okay. So this is the final result.